<laughs> Those effing C words. Changing confidence, child. Two words that are so scary they may as well be personal. Let's talk about it. On this podcast, we'll share our stories about hardship and starting over, making professional pivots, ending relationships and friendships, and having the confidence to navigate change. I'm Marcia Cork, the change coach, and this is Ooh, Those Effing C Words. Hello, hello. Welcome to another great show. Welcome back, MCs. I'm Marcia Cork, and this is Ooh, Those Effing C Words. Today, I have Corey Beelan back from episode 24, um, The Male Perspective. Corey offered up some pretty pot stirring perspectives to that conversation of dating after divorce or separation. But after the show, he pitched online dating to me as a show idea. And I agreed out of curiosity, but also, you know, just for leverage, because there are several women in my life who are looking for love, looking for marriage, but still haven't embraced the idea of online dating. So just like 30% of single adults in the U.S., they haven't leaned into online dating, all right? So Corey's going to talk to us about his process for navigating the first date. Now, you've seen Corey on Ninja Warrior and season four of the Oprah Winfrey Network TV show, Ready to Love, and now he's producing a scripted comedy about online dating and navigating the first date. He calls himself the first date king. Then midway through our conversation, I'll bring in my second guest, Dr. Kyra Alvarado. Kyra is an educator and an influencer who also served as a community marketing manager with Bumble. Now, Bumble is the app that's known for empowering women to make the first move in dating apps. And Kyra was responsible for helping users feel safe and moving their conversations off the app and into first dates. So I promise there are so many nuggets and gems in this conversation, and this time only a teeny bit of pot stirring from Corey Beeland, okay? So let's take a quick look at the trailer to First Date King, and then we will jump right into the conversation. Take a look. Dating can be a frustrating time for singles. I like the idea of being single, in theory. I mean, you get to meet a bunch of new people, you get to know them, and when you meet someone that you like, you pursue a deeper connection. You put on makeup, you put on a costume, for your first set of dates. That's something you put on, man. (laughs) Y'all put on y'all lace fronts and y'all makeup, you ain't that tall, you ain't that... That may not go well for three days. Welcome to the First Date King. How are you? Wonderful. Dating will never be the same after this. Okay, first day King. <laughs> I've been waiting to see that trailer. <laughs> yeah, that's not the full actual trailer that I send into production companies and, and network uh, execs and so forth. That's just a quick little 30 seconds, whatever, just to go. Give a little sneak peek and okay. hopefully. No, I appreciate people, it. I've been wanting to see it. So thank you for that little sneak peek. So. Not, a, not a problem. Not a problem. That, that show is, when I say really based on all of my dating experiences, dating flops, dating success, just, just the whole gambit. Um, and I had a bunch of dating stories and it's funny. It's provocative, it's hard journey. When people ask me what's it like, I tell people it's a cross between the male version of insecure meets real house real house husbands of Hollywood. It's like I said, okay. it's so far everyone that's seen it, everyone laughs, everyone's like, Hey, I can't wait to see more. Can I see the ep- uh, episode? Yeah. People that have seen the first episode, it was like, Oh bro. You got something. I want to see episode two. I want to see episode two. It's like, yeah, this is going to be a hit. And it's like, all right, well, let's see what the people say. Yeah. And you sound natural. I mean, you, you know, it doesn't it doesn't look like you're acting. You sounded like yourself. Well, I'm always acting. So, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just having a good time. Um, we had a good time with it. Like I said, everyone that participated did their best. We did our best. Like I said, I mean, I just can't wait 
I'm, I'm just I can't wait to get, get the opportunity to let the whole world see, you know, what's going on. And like I said, and hopefully it will shed some light on some dating and hopefully it changes some people's minds about dating. But if not, at least you'll get about thirty minutes of just relief from life, laugh, have a good time, and then have something to talk about at work the next day. Okay, so I want you to tell me what came first. So, like you said, it's it's loosely based on your life, or maybe tightly based on your life. Tightly based, it's tightly. Based All right, on, it's tightly based on my life. So, what really came about was um, in 2019, I started doing a video journal. I said, okay, um, 2019, I'm gonna try to fall in love. And once a week, or I'm just going to just pull the phone up and just do a, a recap of what my dating life has been, and let's see what happens. Hopefully, I can catch. Hopefully, I'm going to capture myself on love, but it turns into something completely different. Like I say, I mean, from all the people that I've gone out with, from all the people that I have interactions with, I mean, it's and. When I started going back and looking at this stuff, I'm like, yo, this, this is funny. Yo, this is hilarious. I can't tell. I started telling my friends about it. And my friends was like, let me see it. So I thought, they see it. They started laughing. It was like, bro, you write good as hell. You should do a show on that. I was like, okay, I, I'll write some stuff down. And then I wrote some stuff down. And then once I did Ready to Love, and it was like, to me, doing Ready to Love was like being cheap. TV and film one on one. Now I just learned so much to the process to see how they they would do it. I was like, Hell, I can do the same thing. I tell I, I tell great stories. Mm-hmm. Why not? And, and then that's where I'm, and that's how I started writing stuff. Then I write the scripts. Got, got some of my friends to help. Got some local actors to help. And and then bam, here it is. Okay, so I'm interested though in how how you use these stories to influence the suggestions and recommendations that you make for online. So this conversation, like I said, I'm excited to have it because I've wanted to talk to quite a few women in my life about online dating who, you know, are still the holdouts. And to have this conversation with you where I know you'll make it funny (laughs) that we can, you know, kind of laugh at some of these scenarios, um, but also walk through some do's and don'ts that will probably be helpful for either convincing them one way or another. I don't know. I can't really say that it's really going to be a push to actually try online dating, but, but we'll see. So how does this show, creating this show and all of the experiences that go into building this show, how does that influence the suggestions that you make? Uh, well, like, well, it all started during the pandemic. We all know during the pandemic, online dating just really just blew up, right? But yeah. That's when I okay. really, really tried it for real. For real. Like, I tried online dating before. I put a little, a little post up. I really wasn't serious about it. But during the pandemic, um, I was trying to figure out some places I would get hits, some places I wouldn't. Sometimes people would respond, sometimes people wouldn't respond. So I was trying every single possible thing. And black people know that I have a degree in electrical engineering. So between electrical engineering and fitness, which you do something over and over and over until it works. If it's not working, you try something different, different strategies. Okay. So, I, so I thought trying all these different strategies, and then I would look at other people's pages. And people had really good pages. Some people just had horrible pages. So I thought it was amazing all these little tweaks and before you know it one thing will work the next thing will work the next thing will work and then i, and then I, I just I started looking it's like oh i got a little formula that that greatly increased my um odds of meeting people okay and- okay so we are going to hold court today this is going to be what i'm calling the king's court segment so this is dating according to the first date king So I'm going to run through a few things for your input, but I want you to just start off, you know, first clarifying what you mean by online dating, because, you know, we can be talking about apps and things like that, but we can also be talking about just being a part of, you know, social groups, Facebook groups, things like that, meeting and hooking up online and then 
you know, meeting up in person. So tell me, tell me, tell me what online dating is. Before we go into online dating, mm -hmm. there's something that people just need to be aware of. Can you okay. put that? Can you can you put up the the um the first stat about who's getting married, who doesn't get married? Okay, let's see. Okay. Now, with that being said, right now. Is it safe to say that, that, that the majority of your audience is probably black? Yes. All right. And I come from the black community. Now, there's a Census Bureau. They dropped the post in 2009, 2008. This is 2008, mm -hmm. where they were saying amongst all the races, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, mixed, black women are the least likely ones to get married. And in 2008, only 23% of the black women in the population got married. 23%. That's alarming. Now, I, now I'm not here to say, hey, it's black women's fault. I'm not here to say it's black men's fault. I'm here to say, look, this is a real stat. And that was in 2008. That was over 10 years ago. Okay. And that number has been trending. When I say trending, in 19... 20, 10% of black men and women didn't get married. 10%. And, okay. and it's been climbing steadily since 1970. I mean, it's been really climbing higher than anything else. So I'm making this to say, I know a lot of people say, well, oh, I'm the exception. I'm different. I, 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 know, I know some of the exceptions. This is not I'm like, yo, this is the hardcore flag fact is that black men and black women are not marrying are not married okay so with that being said you either change with the times or you get left behind all right and i mean that in the context of this probably about 50 years ago if you wanted to go out for a night on a town on a friday night you would have to go to the bank you have to go to the bank take out 100 bucks Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. you're having dinner, you're catching a show, you're doing all types of stuff, right? Okay. Times have changed. Now, you don't go to the bank. Hell, you don't even carry cash or credit cards. Now, it's just, hey, I'm going to tap my phone. It's very secure. It's, it's, it's easy. And it allows you to actually track your money. Times have changed, okay. right? I'm following. Now, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure how old you are, but, but I think you come from the group where... At one point in time, in order to get a job out of college, uh -huh. the best way for you to get a job is was a recruit. Like recruiters had to come to the school, or they had to be at college fair, or you just you just absolutely just had to know somebody. Okay. In or in order to get a job, right? Yeah, that's right? still the case. You had to um, <laughs> you had to get the uh that that really expensive that really expensive card start to print your resume out on. And you had to show up in person and say all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, fast forward, nowadays you pick your phone up, boop, um, hey, I want to work in this field, in this location, make about this money, and thousands of jobs come up. And now you just click, you just, you just click a button, bang, job, right? Times have changed. Okay. And to give you one more perspective, about six years ago, a woman would be insane if she left the club at 2.30 in the morning got in the car with a complete stranger and had them take them all the way to their home. Okay. Now, they do a, it's like it's nothing. It's Uber. I dare someone to stand out front of a club 2.30 in the morning and try to catch cat. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. I dare you. So, so I say all this to say, hey, times have changed. Either you change at the time mm -hmm. or you get left behind. So basically, mm -hmm. we embrace technology and apps and these types of platforms and other areas of our lives, but not quite for online dating. That's yes. And, okay. and, and for me, I just don't understand that in my personal opinion, and you're a married woman, you might agree with this. Would, would you say that the most important decision that you'll make in life is who you partner with? Definitely. All right. So if that's the most important decision that, that we're making, why are we just leaving up the chance? You, you just leave up the chance that you're walking down the street 
in your neighborhood, some guy just happens to be at, at that same place at the same time, recognizes you out of thousands of people, mm-hmm. and he picks and he comes to speak to you. I mean, I know that's how it used to happen, but but life is a lot more transit. The world has gotten much much smaller. You now you can actually reach out to the type of guy you want, the type of woman that you want, mm-hmm. some of the values on the same page. And making this process a lot more easier and giving you the ability to succeed. But the problem is, is that far too many people have asked online dating and then go tell their girlfriends, oh, girl, it's some bull. All the dudes on here, all they want is just an ass. They ain't really want to This voice <laughs> you use when you imitate women. <laughs> but they go and they tell that. Um, but, but, but truth be told, that's just the rules of the game. I ask, well, I've been asking people a lot, what do they think online dating? Mm-hmm. And a lot of women will say, in my experience, and a lot of women that, that I asked this question, they mm-hmm. was like, oh, it's a place where I can meet and vet people, but it's really a lot of BS and I don't really don't trust it, right? And mm-hmm. I asked some guys and they was like, yo, this is the easy way to meet women. I can sit on my couch and just scroll and meet women and, and see what happens. But the but what really people need to understand what online dating is, it's a marketing platform. Marketing market, platform? It's a marketing platform to okay. market who you are. That's the first thing. The goal is not to, I'm going to pick this guy or I'm going to pick this woman. No, the goal is to get to an in-person meeting. It's like mm-hmm. going to the club, mm-hmm. go to the club, and you say, all right, so how tall are you? How tall am I? 5'8". Five, mm-hmm. five eight. All right, so you're 5'8", so I already know. You prefer to have a man. You prefer to date a man who's six feet or taller, correct? Prefer, right? So imagine going to the club, right? You go into the club, you see a hot chick, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, how tall are you? Five, eight. All right, so you're 5'8". Imagine going to imagine <laughs> going to the club, right? You go into the club, and you say, all the men in here that are not six feet, get out. All of a sudden, all the men, disappear. All the men five, five, ten, under the all disappear. Uh, then, then you may say, well, I don't have any kids, so all the men who got kids want you to leave the, leave the club. Then all the men that have children leave the club. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, hmm, I want to date a man who's educated because if he's educated, there's a good chance that he's probably ambitious. So you get rid of all the guys in there who who don't have a college degree, and then you're probably like, all right, well, I'm, I'm looking for a long-term relationship. I only want to have a one that who are interested in long-term relationships. Now you are left with a preferable, a, a selection oh, of men, okay. preferable of men that fit what you're looking to get started with, just to get mm-hmm. started. Just to get started, then you start going through who you're attracted to, who you're not attracted to. And but like, do like, you think that women don't already know that? See, the see, see, the problem that I noticed what's happening is it's it's so I can't think of the cr- statistics. Looking at some of these statistics, so according to Reddit, um, currently men represent about sixty two percent of the people on dating apps. Mm-hmm. That's twenty twenty two. But even as I look back as far as twenty fifteen, it was that same ratio. 62% men on dating platforms. So it's not that I don't think anything has changed really. <laughs> it's always been a higher percentage of men willing to date, but I think women's attitudes have changed. Their their but, attitudes about what they can actually who they can actually match with and success stories maybe. All right. So here okay, so I'm glad we got into this part, right? Because here's the problem Right? I wouldn't say the problem. I, I would say the issue is changing the mindset of women because from what I have spoke to women, a lot of women say that they don't like it because it puts them in the driver's seat. Because believe it or not, if you're, on, if you're doing online dating, the ladies mm-hmm. are in complete control over this process. For men, it's a numbers game. For women, it's, hey, I, I still got to be selective about who I'm interacting with. So it puts a lot of onus on a lot of women and a lot of women aren't really accustomed to to that. So it's almost like you go into a, let's use the same club reference, right? 
Mm-hmm. You you kick out all the men that that doesn't fit your get started criteria, but now you have to go up and say, "Hey, how you doing?" Okay. That that's not what a lot of women, in my experience, say that, that they're comfortable with approaching men. So it makes them feel a lot uneasy. They rather just say, sit back, let a guy come approach them, and then they start making their decisions, yes, no, whatever that may be. Hmm. And so that, that puts them in a, in a, in a unfamiliar territory. Okay. unfamiliar territory. And my whole thing is like, hey, look, women have evolved from being in the kitchen to being the head of the seat, uh, the head of a company. This is a process, ladies. You need to be, ladies need to be more open and more proactive in this concept mm-hmm. because you don't want to be part of that 75% who, who ends up never having a family. And that's so the real thing. You, so you're saying that matches happen if women are, or, or more likely to happen if women are more proactive in... If women are more proactive and more pleasant. Like, for example, when building a profile, right, there's there's, the first thing that you do, which when I I coach my clients, I coach my friends on this, is ladies, you need to have, men and ladies, let's go for men and ladies, you need to have the minimum of six photographs, six photographs. But but, but I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there, right? The first thing is that you need to be honest with yourself because can you post the young lady with the sunglasses? All right. Can you post it really quick? Yes. So for the people listening in, so this is an image of a woman. Her face is blocked by, a you know, kind of graphic, uh, a sticker of some sunglasses. And she has and no, she writes no bio. in her profile. Yes. <laughs> This woman writes no bio. She only has three photographs. And, and what I've been learning is that, first of all, this woman, I'm going to tell you off the, off the back, the majority, of, the majority of men would think this woman is a 10. Really? Yes. This wouldn't be a catfish kind of situation? I, 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 outside of, I'm just saying, for what we see, mm-hmm. most men would consider this woman, if I look at her profile, most men would consider this woman to be a 10. If she, by her being a 10, she ain't got to write nothing. She ain't got to have a bunch of photographs oh, that's because she's so attractive to the point that men are just swiping on her, hoping to get a chance, right? But what, but what I've been noticing is that a lot of women feel like they look like them. They look like her. Okay. So, so what, they'll, what they'll do is, well, I already got to put up one photograph because I'm hot, right? Yeah. <laughs> And this is where you have to be honest with yourself. The one thing I've, I've learned that dating profiles will definitely let you know how you look, how, how the opposite sex is rating. Mm-hmm. It will definitely let you understand that. And so what, what I say is, hey, look, if you are a seven slash eight, more than a seven side, all the way down to a one, you need to actually put together an actual profile. You need to be honest with yourself and say, man, am I a six? Do men think I'm a six? Do men think I'm a seven? Be honest, because if you're not honest with yourself, you're going to get very bad turnouts, which means that for, like I said, everything I'm getting ready to say right now, if you are a 10 or a nine, it doesn't matter, right? Everything I'm getting ready to say, but if you are borderline seven, eight and on down, you need to do Everything I'm about to go through with you guys, right? And well, the first this is thing already is, a problem because that is going to be a tough pill to swallow. No one wants to rate themselves in that way. <laughs> so this I, is well, this is why they aren't on dating apps. But it it doesn't. It's going to happen to you if you just go to the club or social setting or whatever, right? It, it, the, the process is still the same. No man looks at a woman and be like, man. She probably got a great, she probably got a great personality. She probably got a lot going on for herself. And she probably smart as hell to hold a conversation. I'm gonna go over there and try and, and try to talk to no man ever said that. Your profile needs to be needs to be legit. You need to be, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase your chances of 
men selecting you and the more men select you, the better the better chance you're going to get to pick from. So this, okay. this, this, so this I'm going to I'm going to make this a blanket recommendation then without women having to rate themselves that maybe it would be good practice for everyone to provide six photos. To okay. increase your chances, you're going to now you can put up one. I'm not saying, hey, I'm, this is not a one size fits all, but what I'm saying is, hey, to increase your chances, you can put up yeah. one, take your chances. Okay, right? so tell me what types of photos, what types right. of photos, are these active photos, lifestyle photos? All right, so the first two that you need, you need a headshot, ladies. Like right now, yeah, you're like seeing my face, mm-hmm. yes, a, a okay. close up shot, men and women, it needs to be a close up shot to so that the person that's swiping gets a good look at you, a really good look at you. And once again, I see far too many women who do this. They're trying to look sexy and they're trying to look sexy or whatever. I don't know what they're, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Smile. Smile. <laughs> smile. When you smile, once again, it's advertising. When you smile, you look happy. The person thinks like, man, I'll be happy if I'm spending time with her. Or, <laughs> or, or I'll be, I'll be, I'll be happy if I'm spending time with him. So just sitting there, you're just like, okay, smile, smile. It's very inviting. It's very inviting. You need, you need two, you need two headshots, right? The next thing is that you need two full body shots, full body shots, right? Mm-hmm. Men and women. And I say this to ladies all the time: if you're a big girl or you're a bone thin. Let us know that you're a big girl, you're a bone thin. And the reason why is, is that you're trying to attract men that are into big girls. You're trying to attract the men that are into bone thin women. The worst thing you can do is try to hide all this. You meet some great guy. You've been texting for two or three weeks. You don't start talking on the telephone. And then when you guys show up, he sees that, hey, wow, you're a lot bigger than I anticipated. He calls interest. Okay. You just wasted your time. Or you represent or say, yourself well. Yeah, same thing for guys. If you got a pot belly, for ladies, hey, let your pot belly roll because there are women out here that like men with a pot belly. You're trying to attract what people that like what you got. That's fair. I'll go with that. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and let's be honest, ladies. I know some of you guys, are, I know some women are conservative. One of my clients, she, she had a full body shot up. It was just a really bad body shot. It, 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 it and she's in great shape, by the way. She has a really great body. I'm like, that's not showing anything. It's not showing anything. I was like, you need to change it, put on a smaller coat. I'm not saying you got to have your girls out, but she had this huge, this huge coat on that showed nothing. I was like, throw it, have it on a nice dress, show it. She changed the photograph. She changed that photograph immediately. She started getting hits immediately. Hmm. Immediately, she's like, oh wow, Corey, you, you might have been a little bit right. What else? What other advice you got, right? And then what you want to do is you want to put two, two more photographs of you doing something. Okay. Not of your, not of your dog by itself. Not, not of some meme, but you doing something. Give the person an idea of what it is that you are into or what you may like. You need this, men and women. You need these six photographs. Okay. Right? Active shots. Now, so now as we get past this, the biggest thing I tell men and women is this: women, you are writing for men. Men, you are writing for women. Far too many women start writing for women thinking that this is going to help them. Hmm. Ladies, I got news for you. We don't read your profile. (laughs) We don't. Uh, We don't read your profile. All right. Speaking of these profiles, you gave us a couple. So let's look at what you thought were bad ideas. Correct. Bad profiles. All right. I might be able to read. This is a little small, right? I so can off read the it. You can't see it. Okay. If you can read it, go ahead because it's really small for me. All right. So trying this thing out. People been finding their person online. Maybe I'll find my person too. I'm a mom and entrepreneur. My personality is mixed hippie unicorn fairy with all of the emojis who is heavily protected by the ancestors. Heart, heart, heart. Let me clear up. I'm slim thick one child and want more if the right daddy come along. I'll never out ho a nick, but I will out hustle him. Beamer gang. <laughs> Beamer girl. I got my own everything. 
I need time and loyalty. All right. So let's fix this. Let's fix let's fix this profile. This, this is something that I used to do a lot on on my first day king uh Instagram is where I would find these women's um profiles and fix them. So first thing is this, ladies. What she just wrote, she just wrote for lead this up, by the way, because I'm 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 looking at it. What okay. she did was she wrote for another woman. She didn't write that for a man. She wrote that as if for a woman. Hmm. Meaning that, ladies, you should be writing two sentences or less. Fellas, hmm. you should be writing three sentences or more. So let's fix her. Let's fix this, right? So the first thing is trying this out, gone. Throw that away, right? Go to the next one. I think she says, uh, if you pick them and find that person, throw that away. Those first two, those first two are absolutely no point. Waste of space, because men ain't gonna read. After that, men have been done. You're on the site. I know you're trying to site. So therefore, you ain't got to tell me. Next one. Maybe I'll find my person too. Get rid of that. Nothing. Uh, I'm a mom entrepreneur. Your profile, I know this profile, the profile already says that she has kids and she wants more, right? And then, then once again, she says it again at, at the bottom. Don't need it. Um, entrepreneur, ladies, FYI, ladies, check this out. Note to self, men don't care what you do for a living. Hmm. We don't care. The only men that care what you do for a living are men that are expecting for you to help fit the bill. Hmm. So, Saying that she's an entrepreneur is just, once again, it's just a waste of space. Uh, all right, now she gets to some good stuff. My personality is mixed hippie unicorn. Fairy, emoji, um, heavy protected by the ancestors. All she needed to say was, hey, my personality is a mixed hippie unicorn fairy. That's it, right? Okay. Um, the next thing she says, hey, to clear up, I'm a slim chick. Don't need it. If you if she has six photographs and two of them showing her body, we know what your body is. So you don't need to be you don't need to write that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I'm a mom, and we you've already said it. It's, it's in your profile that, that you have a mother, and there's a pro, there's probably a good chance it says that she wants to have more. Mm -hmm. um, now she gets into the negative. This is the worst thing that when this is another big mistake women make. You guys come off negative. You start to come off negative when I ain't gonna outhold no nigga. If a man walked up to you and was like, hello, how you doing? The first thing your mouth is, I ain't going to outhold no nigga. So don't even try. Like, dudes get turned off. Men get turned off. And negativity turns us off. And therefore, we're not trying as hard in, anymore. So mm -hmm. be positive the whole entire time. Um, next thing she says, uh, I'll hustle up once again. Ladies, that when, when women say that, hey, I'm, a, I'm ambitious. First of all, mm -hmm. that's not even in men's top 10. That's in your top 10. Mm -hmm. Far too many women become the type of men that, that they want to date versus becoming the type of women that the men want to marry. Mm -hmm. So, ladies, leave out what you do for a living because we're never going to work with you. So what you do for a living is a waste, <laughs> and you ain't paying for the first date. So once again, it's a waste. It's, it's, it's a flat-out waste. Um, her last line, uh, I got my own... I, I got everything. What that tells us is, say this again, ladies, if you're telling us you don't need us, then mm -hmm. why are we with you? Why are we staying? Why are we being faithful? You don't need us anyway. So stop doing that. Men want to be men want to be needed. Men want to be wanted, just like you guys are. Mm. So stop it. It's not a it's not a plus. And then finally, I need time and loyalty. That's so really she can only say two things, and that's um, personality mix happy unicorn, and um, I need loyalty, I need time and loyalty. That's it. Oh, okay. that's it. Go to the next one. Like I said, she hurt herself more because I read this first one and I was like, Ma, I, first of all, all right. I haven't even read all this. Do we want to see another bad example, or do you want to see in contrast a good example? Let's go one more bad example. Okay, all right. This one says. I'm not going to disclose my entire self in this about me section. However, I'm one unique soul. I put extra effort into never fitting in the box of societal norms. So if you're looking for less of a challenge, swipe left. I'd love to link with some dope creatives. I'm in my let's grow and glow stage. Bonus if you're down to go dancing. So let me ask you, did that come off 100% 
screaming positivity or was that kind of like a little bit of negative, a little bit of positive, a little bit of negative, a little bit of positive? Mm, I guess it was a little bit of negative and a little bit of positive. Okay, yeah, she's about 50 50, right? Mm -hmm. And if, some, if a man walked up to you and he was a little bit of negative towards you and a little bit of positive, you got mixed reviews that if you want to get, deal with this guy, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's what, so once again, she broke the first rule. She wrote, what, this is five sentences. All she needed is two. And really, in here, she really only got two. So the first thing out of her mouth is, hey, um, a negative. I don't want to expose myself on yeah. this thing. That, that's what it sounds like to us, ladies. I don't want to expose myself. Negative. Off the bat, like, do I even read more? I mean, she was all right looking, but now she's a little negative. Now nah, I'm, I'm not interested. All right. So then she goes in, however, I'm a unique soul. All could need to say was, hey, I'm one unique soul. Mm -hmm. I put a little bit, um, even the next line was, was okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I lost this small. Uh, I put really extra small. effort into never fitting in the box of societal norms. That's okay. Because, because that does give a little bit about her personality. That's okay. It's not, mm -hmm. it's, it's not too bad. Okay. Um, so next one. If you're... Uh, what it says something swipe because swipe left is really big. It says if you're looking, looking less for, for challenge. Left of a challenge. Swipe left. Swipe left. That's a negative. It's a yeah. negative. That's yeah. like going to a car, a a dealership, and you go up to a, a um a dealer, and the first thing he says out of his mouth to you, if you didn't get your credit right, you need to keep on stepping. <laughs> Would you want to buy from this guy? <laughs> Would you? Okay. Okay. No. And you'd be like, uh, I, I'm good. So I see far yeah. too women who would say that. If you want to hook up, keep swipe left. If, if, if you want friends to bend, swipe left. Ladies, we want to have sex with you. Every guy, who wants, every guy who swipes me a picture wants to have sex with you. And if you let us have sex with you in the first night, we will. If you make us wait, earn it, see who you are. If you're worth it, we'll wait. So ladies, even if you say that to us, what we're going to do is we'll play the role. Oh, no, I just want to date you and get to know you because you, you already wrote your thing. What you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Don't even write it. Let us come. If 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 we, if we about sex, we'll say it off the bat, and then you'll know in a text message. I don't need to deal with this dude. Mm -hmm. Little bit of game. Little bit of game, ladies. So get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. Next one is, um, I love to link with somebody. Don't be creative. That's a great line. I love to link with someone. Don't be creative. Great line. Yeah. So so, mm -hmm. so far she has two. Um, I'm in my grown, I'm in grown and growth stage. Eh, don't need it. Bonus um, if you're down to go dancing. That's so three things all she needed to say was um, just three things. Like I say, it's hard for me to put it all together. I'm she, one unique soul. Yep. I uh, I don't fit into societal norms. And then skip all the way down to the bottom. I think it says I'd um, love bonus. To link with some dope creatives. And that's pretty much it. If you're that's down to dance, then let's go. Down that's it. Let's go. That okay. just that alone, she sounds fun. She sounds happy. She sounds like she's in a good space. If she's a four or a five, I'm swiping right because she may add some peace to my life. She may add some warmth, some fun to my life. Hmm. She would get a little bit more. And let's look at one I picked. That's a good one. Okay. So again, we're not going to use this little rating scale. <laughs> we have already said we're going to have what did we say four to six pictures in our profile alright so we don't have to go with the rating at this point because we got all of the visuals right to attract who we're going to attract okay so let's look at a good example alright what, what, what was the first rule I said in writing two sentences or less yeah alright so she has thoughtful charismatic creative I enjoy meaningful connections and conversations. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Simple, direct. She's writing. Okay. This is what a man would read. Okay, all right. Let, let me start going, right? There's mm -hmm. nothing for me to take away from her. Like, like when women write so much stuff, it's stuff to take away. Now, mm -hmm. a guy couldn't say this. If a guy just said that, that's the worst thing he can do. He needs to be writing a bunch of things in there to let the woman know, hey, this is what I'm about. This is what I'm bringing. This is where I want to go, right? Okay. So that's a good one, right? And let's look at one more good one, and then we'll go into the heart of it all. All right. The make or break stuff. Okay. This one, also short. Love to spend my time hiking and getting coffees on the weekends. 
Huge fan of F1, but mainly love spending the spending time outdoors doing whatever. Two sentences. <laughs> Two sentences. Two things is that she tells you what she's into, mm -hmm. and then she kind of says, hey, this is what I'm kind of looking for, almost. But I'm probably sure it, in her profile it says, hey, she's probably looking for a long-term relationship. Yada, yada. So she really don't need to say it there. She's already said it in the profile later when you get options. Okay. That's what we're going to read with mean, about two sentences. So sound polite, sound fun, sound engaging. Okay. Now you didn't that, comment on either of their photos. So they both have photos. We've cropped them out, of course, to protect their mm -hmm. identity. But um, so it looks like she probably has a full body shot. Yes, yeah, she has a full body. Now, now with hers, the other girl did a good job. It was a face shot as first you saw. With this one, she kind of breaks the rules because she's actually attractive woman or what have you. So she can get away with this. But if she if she's unsure how attractive men are going to find her, she needs to start with a headshot off the bat. Letting us see exactly what she looks like. If she's cute mm -hmm. or borderline cute, we'll swipe up to confirm. Because ladies, 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 take this, take this off real quick because I, okay. I, I need to give ladies some game. <laughs> ladies, we are hit to the duck face. We're hit to the apps and the filters and the makeup, mm -hmm. right? So we know if you look like an eight, you're probably a seven in person, seven, six in person. If you are six, five, you're probably a five, four in person. We're hip to it. We're hip to it. Now, ladies, do the magic. Use the apps, use the makeup, do the magic because you are trying to get our attention to start a conversation. And the conversation is the really biggest thing about online dating. If you get this wrong, ladies, you'll get turned off. Fellas, if you get this wrong, you'll get frustrated and, and be a waste of time. Okay. And here's how this works. Ladies, if you're on an app where you have to start the conversation, mm -hmm. don't do what men are doing to you, meaning that you're sending hi, one word, or hello. Say something, ladies. Say something. And this goes with, matter of fact, this goes for everybody. When you're doing your opening line, do not just say hi, hello, what's up. Say something, introduce yourself, be polite, and then say something about their profile. Fellas, that's game. Fellas, if you can pull something out of that profile to compliment her on, it lets her know that, oh, wow, he actually read my profile. Okay. He, oh, he actually said something. OK. And explain just so we know, because, you know, like I said, these are going to be people who have never tried online dating before. So they're not okay. even familiar with how to navigate. All right. So app. for men and women. Okay. So if you're a woman, on, if you're a woman and you're on Bumble. Right. This goes for both. Introduce yourself. Give them a compliment. Ask a question. Ask a question about what you saw on their profile. That's it. Introduce yourself, pay a compliment, and then ask a question about something you saw on their profile. Because it starts the conversation. It starts a conversation. It's an open, you gotta have open-ended questions. All right? Okay. When you respond, this is a big thing too. People, if you're gonna be on dating apps, you need to be checking your app twice a day. When you wake up, before you go to bed. That, that's, that takes you all the 10, 10 minutes, five in the morning, five in the afternoon, because you want to be active. The less active you are, you're going to, you're going to lose the person because the, the, the average is all say the person talking to 11 people at a time on dating that. So you need to be present. So mm -hmm. after you ask a question, it's going to make them respond. Now, fellas, here's what I tell the ladies. Ladies, if you're leading the conversation off, put to the side three questions. Your most important three questions, ladies, not know how was your day? Um, what's your favorite color? Ladies, ask, you, got three, you got a small window. What's important to you? What do you want to know? If you're a woman and, hey, you want to start a family, ask a guy, hey, when do you see yourself having kids? If you're a woman who wants to get married, hey, how serious are you on a scale of 1 to 10 about being married? Okay. Ask what's important to you. Don't bullshit around because you only get – one or two Texas, and they, they've lost their attention. They've gone on. Fellas, okay. for the ladies. So, 
It sounds like people's uh, people are more inclined or they think this part of the phase, I mean, the stages is to start a conversation. And but yes. And but the conversation really is so- information gathering. <laughs> yes. Yes. Information <laughs> gathering filter and weed people out. Yes. Because what's happening is, is that what, what I've been learning is the more I catch you, mm-hmm. the less and less likely we're going to go to the next phase. And so, fellas, here's some game for the fellas. Here's some game for the fellas. After, after she responds back, ask her out on a date, fellas. Right on the spot. Right on the spot. Say to the lady, say, hey, you look very interesting. I would love to be able to take you out on a date. Are you available Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? Because you only got seven days. The longer you go, the less likely you're going to meet that person. Ask her, hey, are you available Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Mm-hmm. If she's interested, fellas, she'll tell you, yeah, I'm available either one of those days. If she tells you, oh, I got to wait two weeks, she ain't really interested. Because if you told her, hey, I'll give you a million dollars on what day you want to get it on, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she's not going to be like, oh, well, you know, I got to wait two weeks. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah. Then I get the million dollars. No, she's jumping to it. Right. So, fellas, let the ladies know that you're interested and say, hey, I'd like to take you out on a date Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Which day works best for you? Open in the question. Mm-hmm. What, what she's going to say back to you fellas is this. She's going she's to do two things. She's going to say either she's available Friday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or she's going to say, oh, well, how about we just, like, how about we talk a little bit here first so we can get to know you, but we know each other. Those are the only two responses you're going to get. Mm-hmm. If she's really interested by meeting somebody, she'll tell you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm-hmm. and then I'll tell her to say next. If she says, oh, I just want to just wait, get to know you a little better, blah, blah, blah. Well, you everything that you're saying makes, I mean, this is, the, it all parallels the conversation that we're having tonight. So, so like you said, men are on the site because they want to ultimately sleep with you. So. Men are if, at the club, yeah. ultimately wanting to sleep with you. Men are at church, ultimately wanting to sleep with you. It's, right. It's, but, <laughs> asking these, but bypassing all these questions and getting straight to the first date. That will be the male approach. When I, okay, women so, so, will be continuing to filter <laughs> and continue the conversation because that's still going to eliminate more and more people. Unfortunately, it doesn't. You think it will work that way, but it doesn't. Hmm. What I've noticed is, and and I'll be and and after you get offline, I'll be more than happy to show you this so, so you can confirm this. Okay. The more you text these women, fellas. It's going to do two things. It's going to let you know that she really ain't serious, that she just really, she just really wants some attention. Uh, and then second, you'll text so much to the point you've got to start losing interest. You, you've got to strike while the iron's hot. But once again, she, it says, the statistics are that, she, that each person is entertaining 11 other people mm-hmm. at one time. That's right. what it says. So you, need, so you need to get to it. So like I said, so ladies, if these interested ladies He'll ask you out on a date. Ladies, if you want to know if he's interested, you ask this simple question. Ladies will say, oh, hey, what are you getting into this weekend? Because I got some free time. I was really hoping that a gentleman would, I was really hoping that maybe um, you could plan something for us to meet up. Ladies, he's going, if he's interested, ladies, he'll take that, he'll take that bait, ask you on a date. If he's not, ladies, he's going to, he's going to give you the same BS. You're mm-hmm. trying to see who's really interested in meeting you. Mm-hmm. Online dating is all about getting to be in person. Now, this feels like the perfect place to pause my conversation with Corey and introduce Dr. Kyra Alvarado. Kyra is an educator and influencer who speaks on empowering women. Kyra is the author of a forthcoming book called The Digital Transfer. But the reason she's here today is because she's coming off of a recent collaboration with Bumble. So we've been talking about Bumble today. That's the dating app that's most known for having women make that first move. So I thought this would be the perfect accent to this conversation today to actually hear from someone who could corroborate or invalidate Corey's observations and suggestions. And we don't want this to be one-sided. We want to hear from a woman when it comes to some of these tips and suggestions that he's given you today. So Kyra, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Um, one thing that you mentioned while I was planning the show, and you know, we were kind of talking back and forth, 
it falls right in line with one of the things that Corey was saying, and that is that in your role, you were key in building relationships outside of the app. And so he's been saying the whole point of all of this, everything you're doing within the app is to get outside of the app and actually get to the first date. I was telling you, you know, he calls himself the first date king. But what we're talking about is navigating online dating apps so that you can get to that first date. So that's where I want you to pick up and talk a little bit about what that means and your relationship with Bumble, how that how you empowered women to be comfortable in a place, um, you know, to to meet and have these these first dates. Now, I have to say, I have never heard of this before. (laughs) I didn't know such things existed. And so so you were someone who was actually responsible for forming the relationships with local venues so that women could feel safe going out on that first date. But do they know about it? Do the users know about these? No, I think that that was, that was part of the role, right? Ah, I think um, okay. I think my presence online, right? And, and I think that that, so I guess let's go backwards. I think that that's why Bumble had uh, reached out and, you know, they, call, they called me community marketing manager, but really it was, I was an influencer uh, mm-hmm. in partnership with, with Bumble. And I think they recognized that I had a platform that women felt safe and they were connecting with me and they were mm-hmm. um, excited when I would show up online. And so they, they wanted to partner with someone who was already, you know, facilitating conversation and empowering women. Mm-hmm. So it was a it was part of my work mm-hmm. to bring awareness um to women that you can do this. You can engage in these online conversations yeah. and it was part of my work to make sure they knew um what places were were bumble spots. So if you were following me, I was sharing the story of the new bar or the new restaurant Um, that was now a bumble spot. Um, but you know, that work is, is, is hard, right? Because like you said, my main job was to make sure that you just wanted to use bumble. Then the the next line of action would be, okay, which spots are a bumble connected or bumble spots? Yeah. Um, and so I, I guess I, I would have to say that I, I don't know with, complete clarity whether or not people knew but okay. um me participating in the role um may have ultimately just kind of uh by what's the word by um i'm, I'm kind of saying like I'm, I'm trying to say like by uh by, by osmosis, or by yeah. osmosis okay. with me, mm-hmm. you know with me in that role people may have said okay well this is safe i can i can do this so i think that yeah. that's part of like this you know, positioning someone to partner um, with this online dating space, which can be scary and new and uncomfortable for so many. Right. And so that makes sense to have these collaborations with influencers who um, can then kind of communicate how important it is. Because one of the things that Corey was saying is that women have to make the first move. You know, he's encouraging them to make the first move, not wait for that swipe and for men to approach them that, you know, you, 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 you lead the charge. Right. So looking at some of these statistics and I shared one earlier that 62% of dating app users are men. Um, that, that was actually from psychology today. I think I said Reddit, okay. but um, reddit.com and, you know, Google, you can find these simple searches on Google men outnumber women. I think they say nine to one on Tinder, seven to three on Bumble. And then five to one on match.com. I actually wasn't expecting that on Bumble because that's what they market. That's what they communicate is, you know, having women make that first move. Is there a way to use that to your advantage? I mean, you know, that means that there's a pool of men available. (laughs) Right. I think that actually is empowering to have if if a woman is in search of the a partner the most compatible the the partner that is most ideal for her then having options and tapping into the online dating space is actually mm-hmm. exciting right because that means that there are more possibilities and more options for me to get closer to men that really fit my criteria yeah. so um being able to make the first move 
with multiple people. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to go on dates, but being able to go through a selection process and saying, okay, you know, I'm going to make the first move for these 10 um, and be Mm -hmm. able to try to to, you know, because for whatever reason, I'm attracted to them. There was something in their profile that got my attention. They seem warm. Um, and then being able to, when you start seeing uh, characteristics or behaviors in the, the conversation that are not in alignment, then yeah. you can easily, you know, disconnect on the app. Um, and so I think that there is um, a lot of space to say this is a positive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, men men have recognized that they can make connections uh, online. And so women need to recognize, okay, well, I can too. Um, mm-hmm. And then use it to their advantage to then, then um, be open, but then at the same time be um, judicious and make selections. And I, I, I guess kind of speaking in general terms, I think, and I can even speak to this, I think women, we are always um, just used to some norms about, hey, yeah. um, you know, he hit on me or he talked to me first. And then yeah. we kind of go off of the men that are right. attracted to us. Right. And, you know, but then we have so many stories of us sometimes being like, okay, that wasn't a good fit. And you go along with these relationships of men that pursue us. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that there needs to be a space to change the dynamics, right? We got, if we're going to grow and ultimately uh, be women who are empowered and are making the best decisions for us, Mm -hmm. then we do need to be making steps to pursue uh, off of that list that we probably always do, right? I want this man or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then be be open to um, pursuing conversations with multiple men and ultimately then narrowing it down uh, with a few who we mm-hmm. are comfortable to going um, off of the, off the app. So I think this is... Um, this is a game changer for us and, and recognizing that in 2022, we can do it differently and not go off of, uh, again, some old practices that yeah. genuinely have not always served us, which is waiting for the man at church or waiting for the man who at mm-hmm. the restaurant or whatever to ask us on a date. We yeah. now have space to to um, to advance our love lives in ways that we haven't been prepared or skilled at doing in the past. So it would be nice if I can, if you can comment on this at all, what do you suggest they do not knowing whether there are um, safe places like these bumble spots? How should they approach um, or embrace the idea of meeting face to face and feel safe meeting someone for the first time? Well, a common rule for women is to make sure, and anyone, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's not just women that can be vulnerable uh, when you That's meet true. someone mm-hmm. new. So I want to make sure that I'm inclusive in that case. I am particularly focused always on how do we empower women. But um, when someone e- does go on a date, it's really important that um, you have a a friend, a family member mm-hmm. who is aware of, of the place that you are going to meet this new person. Okay. Um, and then even throughout your date, you should be providing your contact person um, with updates. You know, I am, I, I'm currently at my date. Uh, you know, the, the date has shown up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still here, you know, all good. Uh, And then if, you know, and if you choose to go to a a future destination after, right, oh, we're going to grab drinks here, you should be letting your person know. Um, And you may even want to go as far as sharing your location with your trusted person throughout that date night so that, you know, you feel comfortable that Mm -hmm. if something happens, they they have a clarity and understanding of, you know, um, your GPS mapping. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that that is a useful strategy in in navigating um, new meetups. Okay, perfect. Let everybody know where they can follow you, Kyra. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Kyra Z Alvarado. Um, And thank you uh, for having me today. It was a lot of fun talking about how women navigate uh, online dating. Yes, this was perfect. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. So, Let's go for a little bit more on this. Mm-hmm. So once you ask that question, like I said, they're going to give you something. 
whatever they give you back, you're going to give this fella. Give you some game, fella. Give you some game. You're going to say, hey, can I have so, something along this lines? Can I have your number? Tell her why you need your number. I want the number so that so that we can start the start the process of connecting. Second, I would like to do a video chat so that so that way you feel confident and safe that you know that I'm the person on the on the profile. Okay. And so that we can start planning out the details of the date. If you tell if say it up, I got a script for you, fellas. If you wanted to DM me, I'll give you the script. But <laughs> you want to follow that guideline. It, it it does a couple of things for you. Do you, you really fellas. have a script? It, it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it it works. But once again, it mm -hmm. tells the woman says, Hey, I'm interested in increasing our connection. I have a plan and I'm being assertive because I'm interested in you. I'm I, I'm I'm by doing this, you are overcoming some of her obstacles. Some of her, a lot of women have obstacles. They they say, like, what if it's not the person? I don't want to show without the person. Well, if you video chat, you get to see that I'm the person. Okay. Then you tell her, hey, by talking on the telephone, I want you to feel safe and comfortable on our first date by talking on the telephone, mm -hmm. scheduling a video chat, planning, planning the details, and then on a date. You say this, fellas, she's going to give you the number for you guys to either call or call to the date. Now. I hear women say all the time, well, I don't want to give a stranger my number. What do you be the treat? And I'm like, have you ever gone out to a club or to a soca setting and giving your number to a complete person that you've only seen one outfit? You don't know yeah. if he has a college education. You don't know if he has any children. You don't know he does for a living. And you haven't seen him. No. You are getting more information from their dating site than you are getting from getting from a guy a uh, in, in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you never say, what if he's a creep? Ladies, if he is a creep, just block him. You're going to block him anyway once he says something that you don't like anyway. So just block him. Like, stop using it as, as an excuse to meet somebody because you're afraid that what you're really afraid of is that, hey, I may like this guy and he not like me. Or I, I may want something, but it's, it's just going to fail. When you think negative, you get negative, you get negative outcomes. When you think positive, you get positive outcomes. If, if you're unsure about, about meeting the person, make sure that you're meeting him. Make sure that you're meeting him at the location. Make sure that it's a public location. Make sure one of your friends knows where you're going to go and that they need to be texting and calling you 45 minutes to an hour to make sure that you're in a good, good space. If you're not doing that, then are you really concerned about your safety or, or are you more concerned that, oh, this is going to crash and burn? Remember... Okay. 75% of women are not going to get married. Change with the times or get left behind. Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity. I say all the time, I wish men and women would treat their careers like they treat their relationships. They plan their careers out. They mm -hmm. plan how to move forward. They get prepared. They take some courses. They get some certificates. They get prepared for these careers. But when it comes to a relationship, which is more important in your career, you're not you're not planning, you're not being prepared, you're not asking people who hey, who are successfully in long term relationships how they become successful. You're not asking the people who have crashed and burned why did you crash and burn. These are your certifications. These mm -hmm. are you being prepared. Okay. The great T, the great T D Jake said, fellas. You don't become faithful to a woman once you get married. You, you're faithful to a, a, your, a woman, three or four girlfriends before you meet your woman. So that way, when you get finally into your woman, you know how to be faithful. Yeah. Women, you, you don't start being, you don't start acting like a wife once you get married. You start acting like a wife two or three boyfriends ahead of time. So you actually understand what it, what it takes. Yeah. So... I'm not here to coach about what you guys are going to do in your relationships. My objective is for you to be successful in online dating. How you measure your success is how often are you getting in front of the person? How do you think that you can text somebody and know what their, what their values are, where they're really trying to go in life, mm -hmm. how they're really going to treat you? You can't. And I've seen far too many people like, 
girl, I'm getting, I can't, uh, I can't talk to him. Why? Because because his grammar is horrible. Mm. What does his grammar have to do with how he's going to treat you? When you guys get into a situation and in, in a real relationship, his grammar ain't going to matter how he handles that situation. Hmm. Does it? No. So how many conversations are you having before you coordinate a first so, date? Realistically speaking, because we already know you're advising men to have as few conversations as possible, but women are probably going to have multiple conversations as part of their screening process, part of their filtering process. So realistically, how many conversations could we have or should we have before we get to that first date? In my first opinion, based off of based off of my numbers and mm -hmm. from, from all of this, if it takes more than a week for me to get you in person, the chances of me meeting you greatly start to decline. Greatly, yeah. greatly. That actually sounds greatly. like a lot. A greatly. <clears throat> I mean, it's not. It's, it's, it's really this. Check this out. If, if I meet you, I, I hop in your inbox on a Monday. Mm -hmm. You respond Tuesday morning. Right? Mm -hmm. you, hold on. You like me back on a Tuesday, right? I respond on a Tuesday. You respond on a Wednesday. I'm call I get your telephone number. I'm calling you on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Conversation goes well. I'm asking, conversation goes well. We're video chatting on Friday. We're out on a date either Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Okay. And, that, I, and that and makes sense. I, because you said yeah. you're really only checking messages in the morning and then in the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, doesn't that kind of sound like you, you meet a guy in a club on Sunday? I mean, you meet a guy in the club on Friday. He, he calls you on Monday. You talk Monday, maybe Wednesday. On Wednesday, he doesn't even ask a video chat with you because he's already seen you. So you yeah. talk Monday, talk again on Wednesday. Wednesday, he asks you out. You're out on a date Friday or Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> the longer you – keep in mind, I said before, she's talking to 11 different – of nine, 10 other guys. I'm talking to 10 other different women. Mm -hmm. I need to get you before another guy gets you, especially if I'm really interested. But if a guy's not interested, he'll text you to death. Because he's well, then this is also assuming you're local. Well, once again, when you swipe on somebody, I don't, okay. know about, I don't know about you all, but for me, when I swipe on somebody, hey, I got two categories. I find you attractive and you're less than 30 miles. Okay. That's it. If I get I get people who flat on my inbox who's in New York. I I mean I respond back because there's certain things that I'm working. Like, oh, she's in New York. I'm never going to meet her. So let's see if this works. Let's mm -hmm. see if that works. Let's okay. see if this works. Oh, what have you? As a matter of fact, I'll give you a good line. Fellas, you can use this one as well. Because mm -hmm. I don't use it, but it scores high. It scores high with a lot of females. Because to me, it's it's just. It's just takes the conversation way too long. But when I use this this phrase, a lot of women perk up. Like, oh, you asked that? I ended up asked that before. Oh, my God. He made me a little serious, right? All right. And the question is, <laughs> is, I asked a woman, I said, excuse me, miss, um, what are you emotionally available for? Okay. And they'd be like, oh, he asked that? And and th and they'll go into a whole little little nice little long post. And I read, okay, that's awesome. And then they'll ask Sometimes we're asking right back, but I ask. But I used to ask that question because usually I ask that question in person. But I started asking via text because I just wanted to see: Are these people really thinking about what they're really emotionally available for? Yeah. Some people are like, well, I don't know. I'm I'm dating with intentions. What does that look like? What's the intent? Ah, get married. What does that look like? Hmm? If mm -hmm. I ask somebody, hey, someone says, hey. I want to. I'm trying to go on. I'm planning a vacation with intent to go on vacation. And you and you ask them, well, what, what does that look like? They'll say, hey, I'm trying to go to this island. Not island. I'm trying to go to this place between these dates. This is my budget. This is how I'm gonna get there. And I'm gonna ask this person to go with me. And these are things that I want to do. That's somebody who's really trying to. They can. That's someone who's really trying to go on vacation. But if somebody's like, yeah, we're going on vacation. Where are you gonna go? Uh, I haven't thought about it yet, but it's on my schedule somewhere. Mm -hmm. We ain't going on vacation. We didn't really put no thought, no plan to it. Okay. But like I said, that's just the online dating process. If, 
if, if if now you want to talk about the first date and how to really navigate through the first date, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah. as my closing, my closing advice is that what I I say to women is once again, ladies, seventy five percent of you are not going to get married. That's a real thing, fellas. Seventy five percent of you guys are not going to get married. That's real. That's a real thing. And in my personal opinion, I have no data to back this up. In fact, this is my personal opinion, my experience. I think part of the problem is that I think women have unrealistic expectations. And you guys are missing out on a lot of good men that would actually marry you, be good husbands and great fathers. And when I say that, is that women are expecting for this, per- this complete stranger, this complete mm-hmm. stranger to know exactly what to say, when to say it, knock your socks off, give you these amazing butterflies in your stomach, mm-hmm. right? You're expecting, it's, that's really difficult to do. It's really difficult to do. Yeah. Once again, I, I, I've, I, I've said that to friends. I say you're yeah. playing a game and they don't know the rules. Yes, it's really difficult. Like I said, it's just, I'll give you a real life scenario. I, I've been training almost over 15 years, right? But at this particular time, I had went into this. I had probably been training probably like nine years. And there was a particular t- part of town I wanted to crack into. And the best way I knew how to crack into it was, was to go to the local gym and start fishing their clients. And I, I'm, good at southern, I'm good at southern training. I tried to go in there on day one and sell training. I crashed and burned on about five. First six, I crashed and burned. Hmm. Nothing. But mm-hmm. once I spent time going through their training, understanding how their members work and the ropes and talking to other people and they give me advice, I, I then knock out the next 20 back, next 20 people I sold to, 20 in a row. I was like, man, you're a killer. Once again, I got experience, but this is a, I'm in a whole other place. And for me to sit there and think that I can kill it, it's false. So like I said, far too many women, far too many women just – will bypass really good men because, oh, I didn't get butterflies or yada, yada. Well, when you decided to break up with him, did, did, did having butterflies be part of that decision or did how he treated you, what he showed you, his family values, his consistency, his ability, ability to provide, his ability to communicate, all the things that really matter, which you cannot get on the first date mm-hmm. are the, all, all the reasons why you decided to leave. Hmm. So that's my opinion. It's like, ladies, be patient. Be patient with these men. If if you recognize that he's trying, it's nothing wrong with the guy making a mistake. It's a problem when he makes it twice. Okay. That's a problem. Be patient, ladies. There's a lot of great guys out here that want the same thing you want, but you have to give them patience. And fellas, my advice to fellas is fellas, try. Try. Let her know you're interested. Let her know that you're being earnest. Show her with your actions and not your words. And you'd be surprised how different these ladies start treating you. When you start showing with your actions are driving what you're driving your words, not your words driving your actions. Okay. Okay. So be patient. Get to the first date. All it takes is one. You'd be surprised what will happen if you I said this one last thing I want to say before I almost forgot. 80% of communication is nonverbal. Would you agree with that? I definitely agree with that. And so for someone to be texting and you're making a decision with only 20% of the information, you're more likely to get it wrong than you are to get it right. Oh, he didn't text me back right. Oh, he didn't ask. He didn't act, he didn't say please. Uh, I can't date this guy. Yeah. You're texting, miss. You're texting. Barack Obama wrote two books, right? He wrote two books. The Barack Obama that I know ain't the same Barack Obama that, that y'all see on TV, that y'all read in books. It's a whole different man. You know who Barack Obama is, right? Of course. What does he smell like? <laughs> mm, don't know, right? What does it feel like when he puts Small when he puts his hand in the small of your back. What right. does that feel like? Yeah, I get it. What does it what what does it feel like when when, when you're in trouble and, and you gotta talk to Barack Obama for help? What is that what does that level of security feel like? Yeah. 
You don't know. But even though you've seen him on TV, you read all these, read all these books, it's nothing like spending time with someone. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's do a quick little recap. A quick little recap. You need – first thing is first, you just, mm-hmm. just accept the game for what it is. I know how you want it to be. How, I know how it should be, but it isn't. Just accept what it is. Next, next thing is, ladies and fellas, know your audience. Fellas, you're writing for women. Women, you're writing to men. It's completely different. Okay. Six photographs, people. Two headshots, two full body shots, two shots of you showing that you're doing something. Okay. You want somebody to buy what you're selling. Mm-hmm. Second, ladies, your bio should not be more than two sentences. Fellas, your bio better be more than three sentences. Mm-hmm. Better be. And fellas, in these bios, tell people, say who you are, what you're looking for. Fellas, tell them who you are, what you're looking for, what's your intent. Tell them. In your text message, get to your text messages. Be, be pleasant. I mean, be polite. Mm-hmm. Be pleasant. Always op- always leave a open-ended question. Mm-hmm. Always. Ladies, if you got three questions, ladies, write down the most three, the three most important questions and fire that. Do not ask us, how was your day? Ladies, okay. we don't care. We don't right. care, ladies, if you ask us how our day is. You guys care, but we don't care. Mm-hmm. Go right to it, ladies. Go right to it. It should be, oh, thank you for the compliment. I really enjoyed your profile. Do you want to get married? Go right into it, ladies. Don't be like, so how was your day? How are you feeling? Go yeah. right into it. Go right into okay. it. Let these fellas know that, that you're not playing around. You, you, you're, here with a, with a, you're, you're here for a reason. Fellas, your first question should be, ask her out on a date, the first one. Say, hey, you look fun. i really like to get to an in-person date. Mm-hmm. When are you available? I don't care how you write it. Be polite. Give a compliment. Ask her, when is she available? Okay. And realistically speaking, this takes a, about a week. Takes about a week, fellas. Mm-hmm. If she, fellas, if she's interested, she'll see you in about. A, she'll she'll see you within the week, ladies. If he's interested, he'll see you within with about a week. If, if they're like, I gotta wait two weeks, they're not really interested. Yeah, no, right. that's the fact. On both ends, when yeah. a woman is into you, she's gonna she's gonna see you within a week. <laughs> yeah, this, this one waste your time. So, as, when someone when a female tells me two weeks. I'll, I tell them off the back, oh, that's okay, miss. Um, I plan on being um, somebody's daughter, boyfriend, or, or in a relationship by, by then. I'm sorry. <laughs> Could have been you, but but you got more things to do. You got better things to do inside two weeks. Sorry. Peace out. Um, then, finally, um, these two, this, this one's for the ladies. Ladies, mm-hmm. if the dude has not asked you out by the second text, throw him a line. It's okay. Throw him a line and say, hey, um, I, I have no plan for the weekend. What are you getting into? Mm-hmm. That's a line. It's real simple. He'll say, "Well, I'm even doing this, but hey, if you're free. Let's 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 get together. Throw him a line. If he doesn't buy that, ladies, tell him buy. Okay. He ain't ready. He, he ain't he, he fishing. He out here playing the game. Phil, tell us. Okay. Tell her, hey, give her some structure. Hey, can I have your telephone number so you know I can start building this connection with you through a phone call. If, if that goes well, I would love to schedule a, a video chat for that. And then we can start planning out the details for our first date. Let her know that this is what you're trying to do. And that will get you guys to the, to the phone conversation. Follow that and follow that program. Talk to them first over the telephone. Mm-hmm. Get a feel for their voice, men and women. Go immediately to a video chat. Oh, before we go, <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot. <laughs> What is ladies, it? do ladies do not underestimate the video chat. Okay. Do not, ladies, we are visual creatures. We are yes. visual creatures. Yes. If you show it in your pro- profile that you are serving up steak, and then you get in this video chat and you're giving hamburger helper. <laughs> first of all, there's nothing wrong with hamburger helper. I was Take gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing wrong with hamburger helper. It. it tastes good, right? But when you got your mouth ready for some steak and somebody's giving you hamburger helper, you're a little disappointed. Yeah. You're, you're really disappointed. And I'm going to give you a, a story. This is a real life story. It happened. This also plays out. This is a real life story. Met a young lady, 
text him. He was texting, gave me a number, call on telephone. We're having a great conversation, right? The conversation's going great. It's flowing. It's really flowing. So I say to her, I say, hey, let's video chat. Uh, she says, okay. I say, well, miss, you know, um, we don't have to do it right now. We can schedule it. I, I know you're laying in bed. You just got up. We can just schedule, you know, either on your way to work, after work, or when you go out on Friday the weekend. We can schedule it. I understand. She says to me, oh, no, we can do it right now. This is how I'm going to be looking uh, whenever you see me. She needs to start getting used to it now. Hmm. I said, miss, that might not be a good idea, miss. Uh, I, I really, hey, I'm, I'm having a good time. I, I really I really would like to just schedule a time so that way you're prepared. And she says, no, I'm good. I'm good. I said, so you so you look as good as you look right now and look in your photographs? She says, oh, yeah. In her photographs, she had a duck face. She had on a ton of makeup, and her, eye, her, her eyelashes were a little too thick, so I know you're using a filter. Didn't say this to her, but I understood this, right? I said, are you sure you want to do this? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to go. Right. On the video chat, she's still in bed. I don't care what nobody says. No one really looks their best when you're in bed. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Like, like right now, you're looking really cute right now, right? Thank you. Right? But I'm probably sure in more time. You got the scarf on, you know, wash your hair, lipstick, you know what I'm saying, the bonnet, the lipstick's off, uh -huh. you know, your, your skin looking dry, because right now I'm looking okay, real. I'm still cute even then, but. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that you got your bonnet on, no lipstick yes. right now, your skin got a little glow to your, it. yourself well. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I had her up, and I'm looking right now. In her photographs, her photograph says that she's probably a seven and a half to an eight at best. More on, a set, more on a seven level, right? But that's cute enough to, I just attraction. So I'm like, she comes in the camera, bonding on, skin looking ashy as hell, eye booger the whole nine. Oh, good. She, yeah, she was a solid four, right? But, but, but you know what? I said, you know what? We, we were having a good, a good enough conversation. I'm gonna try to let this slide. As soon as she starts talking, she's missing teeth. <laughs> Stop! I, 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 I swear to God, she's missing teeth, and I'm just like, wah 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 wah. I, I was like, and I told her, I said, Miss, I'm sorry, Miss. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation, but we can definitely be friends. I, I'm, well, I'm, listen, did, then she did the right thing by having that video chat with you. <laughs> no, she didn't. She That's didn't. It. You no, got she didn't. It. No, because because here's it's what happened, very right? Telling. If she if if we would have waited till she got nice looking, and then she then I would have found her attractive. You build up equity. Build an equity. So, so ladies, do not underestimate. We are very visual creatures. It's just what it is. Accept yeah. it, accept it, accept it. We are visual creatures. If you do not want to take 30 minutes to freshen up and look your best, schedule a time for your video chat that you're about to go out mm -hmm. and then do the video chat. Well, I'm going out on Friday night with my girl. Let's video chat then. It's okay. okay. We're visual. It's okay. It is what it is. If you look good on that video chat, we are going to rush to get, to get you in person. Oh, mm -hmm. she's hot. Can I see you tomorrow? <laughs> it All is. right. So that's a actually that's actually a great cliffhanger. So listen, we we could have this conversation all night, but I actually hear a little series here. I hear a conversation about the ten dollar date because that's in your your King's Court rules. You got a ten dollar date in there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you also yeah. have navigating the first date. Yes, so. the objective is to get through to a second day. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to hold you to those conversations. Definitely. Yeah. Matter, of fact, matter of fact, let's do that one in person. Okay. Yeah, we've All been right. talking about doing something on location. All right. All Perfect. right. Navigating the first date according to the first date king. Coming soon. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I know we had a few technical issues, so thank you for your patience and, and not a problem. No, thank you for your patience. I'm glad you.